For the past month, our leaders in both business and politics have been forced to improvise on the fly to cope with the pandemic. They're making the kind of decisions that normally only get made by generals on the battlefield. So maybe it makes sense that they're going to generals for advice. Generals like Stan McChrystal. He's the retired four-star general who served as commander of the U.S. International Security Assistance Forces in Afghanistan. And before that, ran the Joint Special Operations Command at the peak of the war on terror. These days, he's the founder and CEO of the McChrystal Group, which provides consulting services to help organizations build more effective teams. They're helping executives establish crisis response plans in real time, and they're just hired by the city of Boston to help with its pandemic response. Tonight, General McChrystal is here with us to share his expertise and lay out the kind of leadership we need to beat the coronavirus crisis. General McChrystal, honored to have you on Mad Money. It's my pleasure, Jim. Thank you. Sir, when I look at what's happening, I I think uniquely what's going on is something that a general, a four-star general, could do a great job with, which is this fight to marshal all these forces. It seems so, um, I'm not going to, it's a curious mosaic that seems to be devoid a lot of times of the cohesion that you could provide. Can you tell me what, what General McChrystal would do if he were running this war against this disease? Well, I can tell you what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm really asking myself two questions. What's happening and what can we do about it? When I think about what's happening, we're facing an amorphous medical challenge that's frightening, a pandemic. And we're facing an economic challenge related to it. But together, they're very disorienting to everyone. Now, there's a temptation for us to say it's a black swan event. Nobody could have seen it coming. And therefore, we have an excuse for not being prepared or adapting well. And I I don't think that's right. One thing we know about crises, and Jim, you've lived through some, and I've spent a lifetime living through them, is they are inevitable. They all are a little different, but they have a common DNA. And the reality is we have to deal with them. And we'll deal with this one. We'll get through it. But one of the things I would highlight is in... 2003, when I was commanding Joint Special Operations Command, that was in Iraq, and we were actually spread over a number of countries. We ran into a completely different kind of enemy than we expected. It was amorphous. It was networked. It was viral, a bit like COVID-19. It was al-Qaeda in Iraq. And it caused us to change our organization fundamentally, to change JSOC from a very precise, somewhat lockstep, traditional organization to one built on the theory of adaptability. So what I would say now is what we should be thinking about in our organizations, not just at the national level, but our organizations at every level, we need to think about not dealing with just this crisis, although we'll have to deal with this, but to build our organizations with the fundamental premise that crises will arrive and therefore we're gonna deal with the speed and complexity of modern world by building the ability to respond to crisis, not just try to avoid them. Well, General, I know that there's money uh, in this bill that is being signed uh, this afternoon uh, for every every single part of the armed forces, whether it be the Marines or whether it be the Air Force. And what what I I wish could have happened. Tell me how you did this when you when you literally build a country from nothing, uh, in countries that are not that we are not stable. Why are we not able to coordinate everything to the point where we, we have a quartermaster, for instance, who knows that we need masks so that we don't look like a a, a lesser world country where, where there's not enough gowns? I mean, why do we not know? We know it's calling the New Orleans right now. Why are we not and don't have an advanced party down in New Orleans? How come it's not? How come we're behind every time? Yeah, if you really look what makes success in almost any endeavor like this, we want to focus it on a single woman or man at the top. But in reality, it's a set of teams. And you hit the right word, Jim. You said coordinate. There's not a lack of capacity in our country to get this done, not a lack of brain power, not a lack of motivation. But there's a tremendous lack of teamwork. And in reality, what we're really trying to do is link teams of teams together so that those entities can work. And and I think we are we've got a long way to go in that regard. Well, uh, I do think and I want people to know your reputation is one of really not being daunted. I feel like sometimes we feel daunted. How did you inspire people to be able to work, say, remotely as a team and not feel like, you know what, we're losers? You never felt like a loser if you were under your command. 
Well, that's a great, that, I mean, that's a great point. We had to fight in JSOC distributed with people sometimes alone, and we were across 27 countries at 76 bases simultaneously, synchronized ourselves every day. One of the first things we had to realize is when people are alone, they don't have what the Germans used to call the feel of the cloth, the feeling that you could put your shoulder up against your comrade and know you were together. So I think in today's world, particularly in this work from home environment, we've got to set up a daily operating rhythm where we communicate to our teams with candor and accuracy, but the humility to know we don't exactly know what's going on. We can't predict per perfectly. At the same time, we have to get information from them because imagine you're a new employee in a team. You could start to feel alone out in, in wherever your home or apartment you're working. Most of what you used to learn was in the office watching other people or unspoken guidance from your boss as they walk by and touch you on the shoulder. All of that's harder to do. So I think we need to look at what we grow, uh, came to call in JSOC as digital leadership. That's the ability to use video teleconference and use it in a way that you can reach out, know people's name, sort of check their status, but also pass information, contextual understanding to the entire team so that they can act with confidence. There's a temptation on the part of leaders in a case like this to centralize because it's a crisis. So bring all the, the uh, decisions to me. But that is absolutely self-defeating. We're going to beat this crisis with people using initiative down at very local levels, close to the point of action. But they've got to be empowered with information. They've got to be inspired with real leadership. And, of course, we've got to give them resources. Boy, I couldn't agree more. General Crystal, it is an honor to have you on our show. Thank you, General Stanley McChrystal, the founder and CEO of the McChrystal Group and a four-star. Sir, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Jim. And I'll be back after the break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.